imagine the, well, let's see, remember, this is a typical name we use to denote the roots of unities. Amiga S, it's my n roots of unities. We all know we will have n of them all the time. Here's the example of n equals 7. Here's my 7 roots. For larger n's will be more roots. Uh, the question says, find this sum. Look at this. That's the sum we have to find. If you have any recollections of what of the other question we did together, in that question we found the sum of the, like a geometric progression. We picked one root, and we just took the sum of the root, then the square, then the cube, then the fourth, and we found that sum it was zero, I think, if I remember correctly. Here we have another structure. Here we just sum up ident the same power all the time, but we fix this power to some value k. The question is what the value will be. Mm -hmm. It's a nice proof, actually. I like it. Uh, so in exponential form, I hope you remember, in exponential form, if you want to find the values for this omega s, in exponential form, this is something like this. That's, this is the exponential form for my roots of unities. s will take values, any consecutive integral values of, I mean, any sequence of integral length, of, any sequence of integral values of length n will do. Normally, I choose this one from 0 to n take 1. The trick, the trick, the beautiful trick which solves the question is this. You see, I gave a name to this value we're looking for. I call it capital A. What we're going to compute now is this. We're going to compute capital A times omega 1 to the power k. Don't ask me why. I mean, well, I can't explain it to you. It's just my knowledge of my intuition and my knowledge of the roots of unities suggests that this will do the trick. It doesn't mean that it's like some sacred knowledge. After some time, you will pick up this knowledge, trust me. But right now, I mean, and actually, that, that's the thing which will tell you that this is a good trick sometimes to do with the roots of unities. So if I do that, look at it. Let's just try to do this computation. So I have to multiply each term here, each one, with this number. Here's the multiplication. Look at this. It's a long line. I will open it slowly for you. Here it is. So you see, I multiplied everything, including terms which are hidden by the dots. And here I put the one before the last one and the last one. All of them are multiplied with the omega 1. What I'm going to do next, I'm going to look individually in each of the terms here and see what happens with them. First one is easy, because omega naught, omega naught is 1. <coughs> Amiga 1 is here. So Amiga 0 times Amiga 1 is just Amiga 1. It's, it's, no, this is not a brainer. Amiga 1 and Amiga 1. What do you think will that be? Amiga 2. Because when we multiply complex numbers, you, well, geometrically, you sort of, well, here's the, here's the algebraic justification for that. If you multiply Amiga 1 and Amiga 1, here's the exponential forms for each of them. That's the exponential form for the Amiga 1. Here's exponential form for another omega one. When you multiply two exponentials, you just add up the exponents. If you add up these two exponents to n i on n and sorry, two pi i on n and two pi i on n, it will be four pi i on n. This is the exponent for the omega two. In fact, in fact, this argument can be applied to every term which is hidden by these dots. To every one, you can do something like this. You can multiply them in exponential forms and see what you will come up with. Here's my application. Look at this. I start with the omega s, so it's like a general term hidden by these dots. I call it omega s. If I multiply it by omega 1, here's the exponential forms. Exponential form for the omega 1. Exponential form for the omega s. You see this little s here? If you multiply exponentials, you just add up exponents, and that will give you s plus 1. And this is the exponential form for the next omega. So here will be the result, omega s plus 1. What a nice observation, isn't it? If you do, now here's my dot, so you do it for all of these omegas. The one before the last one, this one, it will give you the next omega, omega n take 1. And the last one, omega n. What it will give us? 
it will give us amiga n, which is the same as amiga. Not. So geometrically, what happened? You see, you, you look at this n gone, and by multiplying by omega 1, you just rotated the n gone, one, one complete, well, not complete revolution, but one, this angle clockwise, oh, sorry, counterclockwise. Here will be omega 1, omega 2, omega n take 1, omega naught. So what I'm claiming, actually, that if I do these multiplications here for each of the terms individually, what the result of that will be? Here's a great observation. It will be my capital A again. Because all of, this, uh, all of the terms, they will convert to the next one, but together, as a sum, all of them will be still present there. Amiga naught, which was first here, it will be last here. Amiga one, which was second, it will be first. Amiga two, it will be second. This one will be before the last one. So the whole result is simply my amiga, my A again. You can't deny this is a beautiful trick. Look what we just realized. We realized that the number we're looking for, the number we're looking for, is subject to the equation like this. Well, we can solve such an equation, can we? There are two possibilities when we solve such an equation. One of them, it might happen that this factor we introduce is 1. In that case, my equation becomes a triviality. But this doesn't happen often, doesn't it? This is the first root of unity. To take it to number 1, by taking the power of it, you have to take it to the, at least a power which is multiple of n. Otherwise, it won't be 1. Because I chose omega, omega 1. Is, it's the very first term here. So first possibility when you solve this equation, first possibility is that this factor is a trivial factor 1, but that hap happens only under such circumstances. And under such circumstances, every term here will be 1. If k, if this k is a multiple of n, all of these omegas, their solution to this. All of the terms here will be 1, meaning that a in that case, so m here is an in integral number, Meaning that A here is sum of, you know, sum of ones, which is N. So even though it's a trivial case, we know how to find A in that trivial case. If it is a non-trivial case, if it is a non-trivial case, then we have A equals zero. 